All right. It's your boy. He's back at it again with another video. I just want to talk about this real quick. It's been a while. I know you haven't seen me in a while. Yes, I'm alive. And I know I've made way too many of these top of videos, but I'm going to come into you raw and real right now. So here's the deal, right? Okay. So my bad. First of all, I want to say sorry. Um, there's a negative and a positive to me being gone. I think the positive is I get more time with God and to handle my life and get my life together. The second thing is that I can just figure out, I can take that time instead of making a bunch of content to actually figure out where God wants me to be at. I'm not sure if 100% found that out, but I think I'm much closer than I ever was, um, genuinely. And of course, there are certain questions here and there, but I'm just being honest, this is where I'm at, right? This year has so far been very tough for me. 2020 was very, very tough for me. It was tough for all of you, I'm sure. 2021 sucked for me. 2022 was... Eh. And this year, it's just, just one thing after another, man. But I've gotten to the point where I almost gave up so many different times. There were so many times where I just questioned God and I questioned... Um, I, I question the ministry. I question my purpose, my own testimony. I question a lot of things this year so far, and it's we're only what it's only July, and I'm already questioning everything. And I've gotten to points of stress and levels of disappointment, frustration, and just downright. I I, I hate to say it, but just to confess to y'all, downright compromise, downright just falling back to places that I shouldn't go into and it really started destroying my faith but for some reason I am still here so that's my little intro there just to give you a run a run of what's been going on why as to why I've been away for so long and the question I ask as of recent is I how come I've been through all this stuff so far with other people and it's affected other people and yet i'm still here see sometimes i'm amazed i think like uh yeah most people will come to this point where i've gotten to and i'm not saying this to boast or anything like i'm legitimately saying this out of my heart there are some people who would go through the same stuff that i went through i'm not going to explain it all in this video that they would quit they would give up on god and all this stuff but i'm still here it's like god will not let me go despite me just feeling hopeless and wanting to give up and I feel led today to come talk about this to encourage you because for some reason, God just won't let me go. Something about my testimony, something about the things that God has done in my life in the past, something about my experience, who cares what anybody has to say about my testimony and the doubts that the devil stretches throwing throw in my head. But I know that what happened on November 9th that one year, it changed my life and I'm not the same and I can't go back. I literally can't. Even when I slip up a few times, you know, I may slip, but I never fall. I can't go back. Something about the love of God kept me where I was. It kept me going in the fight. It kept me here. It kept me declaring to the devil that you're not going to take me down. It kept me going in the places where I need to go. It kept me coming back to God's word. It kept me coming back to prayer. And it kept me in the faith at the end of the day. And one thing I just want to do as an instruction to, to you guys it's because this is what works for me, and this is so far, I can't explain it, but it works. It just does. Run back to Jesus and, and, and ask God about his love and seek his love and seek to be loving like he is. Because if you do, you will endure. And just remember the things that you believe. But remember the things that you were taught that was of scripture and of the Bible and, and theologically correct. Remember those things that brought you into the faith in the beginning with and really ask yourself, how has my life changed since that happened? Am I that person again who, who before was doing all these evil things willingly and out of pure desire? Am I that same person now? And why has that become? And it has my life in terms, has my character gotten better because of what Jesus did? Has my family gotten better because of that? Has my morals gotten better? And would I rather live that old life that I was living or would I rather live this life? 
even if it just sucks right now, would you live the life that sucks that you were living in before? Or would you rather live the life that is actually fruitful now that actually that where you actually feel like there's something for you out there in this world? Because when I, before I gave my life to Christ, I was just struggling. I was trying to promote myself. I was trying to do everything my way to try to elevate my own life. And it, I failed. It failed miserably. But the moment I gave my life to Christ, I felt love that I never felt before. The things I actually put my work towards actually started having a positive impact on society and myself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, all those type of things. Things started changing in my life that didn't change back then when I was trying to do it all myself. And the only... The only thing that I could say it was, was God. It's just, it, I can't get past the fact that something changed for the better. And still to this day, I can't go back to what was before. Because I cannot deny that my life mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, I can't deny that it's better than what I had before. So what my encouragement to you today is just to remind you to grab onto the things that brought you here in the first place and meditate on that and really ask yourself instead of asking yourself about all the and I have debunked them questions about if God created the world and he knows everything why he's let bad, bad things happen or why doesn't keep you from trouble all that type of stuff I debunked all that stuff I learned the answers to all that and you know what in fact let's get to that real quick. It's the fact that I knew about that. It's because I knew the answers because God revealed the answers to those questions to me through his word, through the Holy Spirit, and just through just logical common sense. That right there, knowing the answers to those questions made this season in my life that much harder because I knew the answers yet I was feeling like giving up despite knowing the answers to those questions. I want you guys to know that Another thing that just because you know the answers, the answers to hard questions in life and those big, deep questions that make you question your faith, just because you know the answer to those or just because you're seeking the answers to those does not mean you're going to be happy. Knowledge is not what brings happiness. Knowledge brings wisdom that you should apply to your life. When God gives you knowledge, use that knowledge to examine yourself. But knowledge is not what's going to make you happy. Knowledge will never make you happy. And that's something that I've learned and I'm even learning now still, right? Knowledge is not going to make you happy. That's why you have to remember God's love. That's the reason why you have to remember your purpose. That's the reason why you have to remember your testimony. Remember what makes you valuable. Remember your gifts and your talents. Remember that God put you on this earth for a reason and to never give up because that's like treason. Remember that when you came to Christ, you the reason why you came to Christ is you felt like there was, it was better and you felt like the moment you gave your life to Christ that something was built up in you you finally felt like you had a purpose you finally felt like you had love in your life that you felt like you could actually make a change in your family you felt like you could make a change in the church you made you felt like you could make a change in the world and it made your life it gave your life a purpose now remember how you felt and ask yourself and now I ask yourself this question why did I feel that way what about this moment made me feel like I had a purpose? What about this? And once you find that, that's where your purpose is in. Use your gifts and your talents and chase after that. Because your life before, I, I tell you, before Christ, our lives, don't, that don't mean nothing. It ain't going to get nowhere. It's not going to impact anybody. It's not going to impact nobody. No one's going to give a crap. I'm just saying. Nobody really gave a crap before all this, right? For me, anyways. Like... It didn't impact anybody positively. It was all about me. But the moment I started glorifying Christ, now I was pointing to someone who's righteous. Now people were becoming better people. People weren't just getting a be becoming better fans of Kelton, right? They weren't becoming my bigger fans. They were coming, becoming bigger fans of Jesus. And then becoming bigger fans of Jesus because of what he did in me, because of them becoming bigger fans in Jesus, their character started becoming more like Jesus. And now when I realize how people started acting more like me in the past is worse than how people started acting when they started being more like Jesus. And that well, how when people started acting more like Jesus because I was preaching Jesus, that their character was much better than how they were acting before. That's how I knew the difference between 
when I was making a positive impact versus when I was making a negative impact and how I was growing spiritually, emotionally, my morals, all those type of things. When I started preaching Jesus above myself, I became less selfish. I became selfless. I became more holy. I became a, a, a thirster and a hungerer after righteousness. And Jesus says in his words, in his word, he said, blessed are those, and this is in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. I started being filled with that and convicted. And yes, it got to the point where I started becoming re legalistic and I started beating myself up. But at the end of the day, I still cannot leave God because guess what? I remember what he did to me. And through this process of this hard time in my life, I've learned to not be legalistic and I've learned to be more humble. I learned to look at myself, take the log out my own eye, to be open about my vulnerable moments, to be open about the, the, the problems, the sins that I may commit and ask for prayer about those things. It allowed me to ask people for help. It allowed me to take accountability for my own actions, right? I wasn't doing that before Christ. I wasn't taking accountability. I wasn't promoting anything good. I was cussing and doing all that type of stuff. I was promoting all of the wrong things, looking at all the wrong things, everything. But now that I come in Christ, I guard my heart against those things. I pray against those things. I, I, I ask and hunger and thirst for righteousness. I had to sit there and ask myself, why is this much better? And even in doubting whether all this is real, I had to ask myself those questions. And no matter what I did, no, no matter what kind of doubts the devil tried to get me to believe, I found nothing but reasons to keep going in the faith. So I'm going to encourage you to keep seeking his love, that you look at your testimony, because as written in the book of Revelation, it is written, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of what? The word of their testimony. So look back to the blood of the lamb. Look back to how God loved us, that he gave his only son. So whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And look back to your testimony by which you were learned and heard. For faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. You heard the word of God and believed. And now you have faith and now you were saved. Ask yourself why that word was so impactful for you. And ask yourselves, if you try to pursue righteousness in other ways besides Jesus, at, compare the difference. Compare your life to when you're trying to seek righteousness in the things of this world and righteousness in God and see which one is better. Where have you grown the most? Was it in Christ or was it in the philosophy of this world? Because I'll tell you what the world will lead you to. The world will lead you to witchcraft and evil and temptations and, saying, and, and compromise. But God's word is true. And holy and straightforward. Remember your testimony. Remember that this is not, this is not the end of the world, and that there is valuable in the things that you already have. You just got to take a step back and look at your testimony. Look at the blood of the lamb. Look at God's love, and there you will find peace. There is where you will find purpose. That's where you will be revamped at. And it is not going to take. It's not going to be quick. It's going to take a while. But just know. That God is there waiting at the door. But he's going to bless you when you're content with what you already have. He's going to bless you when you know, when you remember who called you. He's going to bless you when you remember the things he already has done. How can you be blessed with so much more things when you can't even be content with the things you already have? It makes no sense, right? I hope you get blessed by this and... Be on the lookout for more content. All right, God bless y'all. Love y'all. God loves you. All right, see you next time. Bye.